Today, I am going to be doing something different than what I normally do. I normally uh, talk about true crime stories involving murders or just, you know, uh, heinous acts, family annihilators, uh, serial killers, those kind of things. Well, uh, I'm gonna put this video today under the true crime category, but no one has died. I have been fascinated with this story, watching everything about it for the last year, knowing that I was in Orlando, I couldn't help but to go to some of these locations, film it, talk about it, etc. The story that I want to tell today is wild and crazy and there's twists and there's turns. So today in this video, we're going to be taking a wild ride and we're going to be talking about the crazy story that is the serial police impersonator, Jeremy DeWitt. So first of all, I want to say this video, well, this was part of the reason why we went to Orlando, so that I could go by Jeremy's office, but we rode over and rode by his house and saw what it's looking like now with the Metro State car sitting out front. If you're not familiar with Jeremy DeWitt, Jeremy Charles DeWitt, from a very young age, he always knew that he wanted to be a badass for lack of a better term uh, he either wanted to be a soldier or a policeman he probably even thought about being a firefighter at some point as he is growing up in the 90s he joined an orlando police department explorer program just to get his foot in the door with the police that all came to a screaming halt when one night Jeremy stopped at a mobile gas station for gas. Now, Jeremy's mom had given him a, a mobile gas station credit card. For some reason, though, Jeremy claims that he did not know that he had to activate said card. So he pulls into the mobile gas station. He pumps gas. He swipes the card for $13.40 in gas. And it declines. He goes in to talk to the, the clerk. And the clerk doesn't know what's going on. She just, all she knows is that it declines. Well, Jeremy has no other way to pay them. So, for whatever reason, Jeremy thought it was a good idea to flash his Orlando Police Explorer badge. Letting her think that he was a police officer. He tells her he'll bring the money back the next day, and she lets him go. But ultimately, she files a report. Uh, Jeremy is charged with impersonating a police officer. He is banned from mobile gas stations for like five years, I think. And he's booted out of the Police Explorer program. He now had a felony on his record. And as most of y'all know, you cannot be a cop. You can't be a police officer with a felony on your background. So his lifelong dreams were shattered. Being the smart thinker that he is, he decided that it would be a grand idea to pay a roommate at uh, the house that he's living at. He paid his roommate to use his birth certificate and social security card, and he gets an ID with his picture on it and the name Brett Solomon. Well, eventually, as is what normally happens, the government found out and Jeremy DeWitt was arrested for another felony. This time it was lying on an official document. In 2005, Jeremy was uh, living with 
it was a family that were friends of his, and they had a young girl who lived with them. Jeremy used his influences and I guess his way of words to sleep with this young girl. When the family uh, heard or when they found out that Jeremy and this girl were sexually involved, of course they were concerned and they reported to their local police department. Jeremy DeWitt was arrested and convicted of lewd and lascivious battery on a child between 12 and 15. Jeremy Charles DeWitt was now a child molester. I don't know how it happened. I don't know how it got to that point, how it got there. All I know is sex was involved. It was not consensual. So I did not, like I said, I was young. It wasn't consensual. He knew my age. He lived with us. I know now that my cousin's ex-wife was fucked. Jeremy was sentenced to five years in jail. And then upon his release, he is now required to register as a sex offender for the rest of his life. It was also kind of around that same time that the state of Florida started changing their laws or their statutes on doing funeral escorts. Too many of uh, Florida's actual police officers were getting, uh, they were involved in crashes or getting hit, performing these funeral escorts. So the state of Florida decided to step away from doing those escorts for officer safety. They allow private companies to come in and take over as the escorts for these funerals. Seeing his opportunity, Jeremy got with his family and some of his friends. He gathered up enough cash and he bought a couple of used police motorcycles from an auction. He painted them and rigged them up with lights. And then Jeremy and his brother began escorting funeral processions. So now I will introduce you to Jeremy DeWitt's brother, Dylan Vogt. In 2013, the Osceola County Sheriff's Department did a um, Craigslist predator sting to catch child molesters. During their five-day operation, they did arrest 28 people, and one of those people was Jeremy's brother, Dylan Vogt. Dylan was arrested and charged with attempting lewd and lascivious battery on a minor, traveling to seduce a child for sex, use of a computer to entice a child, and the sale, delivery, and possession of marijuana. So it, it runs in the family, it's all in the family, like brother, like brother. They're both been charged with child molestation. I mean, come on. After they had been doing some escorts for a few years, uh, they started getting cocky. They really did. Jeremy felt like he was untouchable, so his escorts reflected that. Jeremy is out there breaking laws left and right. The funeral processions were in disarray. The, like, half the people wouldn't have their flashers on. They would miss their turns into a cemetery. The past the cemetery. Jeremy DeWitt himself would fly up the road on the wrong side of traffic going in excess of 100 miles an hour on these small little uh, roads in Central Florida. I mean, you can literally see him driving into oncoming traffic, running pedestrians off the road. The funeral processions were chaos when Metro State ran. Hey! Hey! Pull over! Pull over! Hey! Pull your fucking car over! Pull over! Get out of the way! Move your fuck! 
your fucking car out of the way now! I don't know what you mean. I don't give a fuck what you don't understand! Pull forward now! Pull forward now! Stop there! What the fuck is your problem? I didn't know what your what's the problem back there. For whatever reason though, his dangerous behavior never really attracts the attention of the real police. Hi! How are you today? I'm good, how are you? You must have missed that it's 45 through there, and then you use the turning lane to cut through traffic. Yep. I understand you're in a nice car and everything, but let's be a nice little more car, mature the way you drive. It. Let's nice drive car. the right way are then. A, are you a cop? Don't worry about what I am, because oh, no. I'm a state agent. So yeah, well, what you not. need to do is make sure you're doing the right thing, fuck boy. Nah, he ain't about that life. He's with that bullshit, but he ain't about that life. Fuck boy? Yeah. That's real nice. Yeah, I know. Real professional. The way you almost hit me, fuck boy, oh, yeah, is the way it's professional, bitch ass. Power. You're not a cop. You want to fight? Violate the fucking rule too. How's you don't that? Even act like you're fucking stopping me. You're I didn't pull you over. Dick. Did I make a traffic fuck stop off. on you, fuck boy? Fuck off. Fuck yeah. Boy. You're lucky fuck I don't get out. Be Come on, let's go, bitch. Get out your fucking fuck car. Fuck let's go. Fuck let's boy. go. Come on. Fuck boy. Fuck boy. That's get out. I'm calling you out, bitch. Come on, follow me, motherfucker. That's what I thought. Let's go. Yeah, Come get on. out anytime. I got off my bike. Let's go. Okay, fucker. Follow me, motherfucker. Oh, anywhere you want to go. Right there. We go straight, bitch. Right Light screen, pussy on. fuck. Go ahead. On, Jeremy starts logging onto the website called Ashley Madison. It's the website where people can like cheat on their spouses. It's for married people to cheat on their spouses. And something I, I, I guess I haven't mentioned about Jeremy yet. He is married. Jeremy's wife's name is Rania. She is from Egypt. And she works at Orlando's hospital. When I got home, my wife was like, yeah, we need to go to the emergency room. And then when they put me under drugs, she started asking me questions, and of course, I told her the truth at that point. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you, my wife's fucking Taliban, man. She fucking told him to put the truth serum in, and she's like, tell me where the rebel bases are. <laughs> Where's the money? Yeah. Where's the rebel bases? Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, Rania and Jeremy's love life in the bedroom is no good, so Jeremy then goes looking for more on Ashley Madison. I built a business for six years with one fucking motorcycle. I've lived my life clean and honest. I chose to have an affair because my sex life is horrible at home. And because of it, I meet somebody that next thing I know is writing a statement saying that I'm carrying guns and pulling people around because you went out of your way to find out I was a sex offender. And it just so happened that Jeremy responds to the first person to show him any attention, the first person to send him a message. And her name is Jennifer Burton. As he meets Jennifer Burton, his life is about to get way crazier because Jennifer Burton is crazier than Jeremy DeWitt any day. Hi, I love you, and I I know you don't love me back, and it's fine. Like I told you before, you don't have to say it. You're telling me you're loving me in one sentence, but the other sentence you were telling me that you were going to have the lady throw me in prison. The two issues that we're here for is one, I think this this lady's crazy. I do think she's coercing and pressuring my client to do things that are improper, and I don't trust the validity or accuracy of her statement. She calls me from 10 different don't phone answer. numbers. You don't have to answer. Yeah. For harassing phone calls, stalking. Oh, yeah, she comes to my know. office and it's just... Jeremy. Yeah, you know, Roger, detective. Jeremy and Jennifer meet one night for dinner, and then they were supposed to get a hotel room at the Hard Rock Cafe, but Jeremy did not want to pay that much for a hotel room, so instead they drive down the street to a comfort inn 
Jeremy plays off like he is a police officer working for the Orange County Sheriff's Department and flashes a badge and a, his fake guns. And they spend the night together at the Comfort Inn. As soon as Jeremy gets up that next morning and leaves, Jennifer starts Googling Jeremy. And the first thing that pops up is his picture for his sex offender registry. This makes Jennifer Burton furious, as it would anybody, to find out that, you know, you just slept with someone, it turns out they're a sex offender, all this stuff. But as I said earlier, Jennifer Burton is not a normal person. She is really crazy. So Jennifer Burton, instead of maybe confronting him about it and then just ignoring him, well, she goes down to the sheriff's office and ref and files a police report against Jeremy, telling them that Jeremy's got guns and he's smuggling guns in from Egypt. And she tells him that he's driving up and down the road, pulling people over and pretending to be a cop. Just all kind of crazy stuff. Now, Jeremy being a registered sex offender, he can't own them, but there are guns that aren't real, but they look real, like pepper ball guns, airsoft guns. You can get them that look exactly like Glock pistols. And this is what Jeremy has. So Jeremy's playing off this whole, like I'm a cop routine that first night. The police go and they arrest Jeremy DeWitt as a sex offender. He has to report all of his internet identifiers, social media accounts, email addresses, anything and everything. He has to report it all as Jeremy DeWitt registered for this Ashley Madison account. And then he, he, he signed up for this uh, like text messaging app called Kick. And that's how he talked to Jennifer at first. He didn't, the police department had no knowledge of these accounts. So he did not register them being a sex offender. That was what he was, a he, he was arrested for failing to register. You know, he bails out. Jeremy and Jennifer go a little while without talking. In between in this time period that Jeremy and Jennifer aren't talking, Jeremy is back on Ashley Madison and back on the other side looking for other women that he can talk to. And then he meets Jessica Bolden. Now, being a sex offender, there's a lot of stuff that you can't do. And obviously, it could cost you business or relationships, all kind of stuff like that. People can look you up all the time. So Jeremy, in an attempt to try to get around that, um, if you look at his shirt, he spells his name wrong. Like, he drops the E at the end, hoping that if, like, potential, like, funeral homes or somebody goes and looks him up, they won't find him under that name, and they can't see his sex offender status. Below that, it says SORT on it, S-O-R-T, which stands for Special Operations Response Team. Why would a funeral escort company need a SORT team, which would kind of be like a SWAT team almost? Another way that he gets around it is by using other people, say for instance, Jessica Bolden. He hooks up with Jessica Bolden and then he convinces her to be a business partner. So he uses her to put her name on the business since he's a sex offender, so that they can qualify for certain things that he could not qualify for. One such example, Jeremy decides that he wants to add a fleet of ambulances to Metro State's whole ordeal. But as a sex offender, you can't do that. You can't have that privilege. So Jessica Bolden goes in and files, as the owner of a business, she files for an LLC, Metro State, emergency services. Well, one day, Jeremy and Jessica, they're in Tampa. Uh, they had some kind of escort and they're in Tampa and they go out to eat. The U.S. Customs Office in Tampa saw Jeremy. They knew that he wasn't, they thought he was impersonating a police officer and they called the real police and the Tampa PD show up. Well, Jeremy trying to bolster himself during this whole ordeal, Jeremy tells them that he served as a cop in Orlando and that he was in the military, which 
We're both lies. Yeah. I served as a cop, and then okay. I served for 12 years in the U.S. Army okay. as a major. Now, that encounter with him claiming that he served in the military, it like crawled under the skin of every active duty and every retired soldier. These people absolutely hate him. And from that point on, that whole ordeal followed him everywhere. I mean, even to this day, people are still making videos on Jeremy DeWitt committing stolen valor over this and uh, wanting him to be prosecuted for it. And I, I can't say I blame him. I really can't. Now, shooting shit just for the hell of it. What branch okay. of the military were you in? Army. Army? So was I. Where were you stationed? I was Benning and then I was Bragg. Uh, I was originally a Ranger, 3rd Battalion, out of Benning, and then I was 3rd Group out of Bragg. Wow. But, yeah, I was 18 series, so I was 18 MOS, so my last my last six and a half years, seven years almost. Wow. So, so you yeah. jumped. Oh, yeah, I was, I, oh, yeah, I've been jump certified since I was 18. Wow. That's why I left the Army. I had a streamer. Uh, my riser popped when I was going into Fallujah. I basically almost destroyed my back to the point where I can't even get certified as a firefighter in the state of Florida. That's why I am started my business. Let me back up. Have you ever been in law enforcement? How would you ask if I was in law enforcement? Have, have you, you ever been, been a law enforcement officer? I've never been a police officer. Okay. Have you ever been in the military? I have. You were in a, what branch? The Army. The Army. When were you in the Army? I wasn't actually in the Army. I was actually certified and trained and then I no, no, did no, private I, details. No, what I'm asking you, have you ever been in never the United States military? Never the United military. States Army. You were oh, never sworn United into States the Army. military trained me and then the details that I yeah, do. But that doesn't make you in the military. Right. Okay. Okay. It, it was at this point that Jennifer Burton co starts coming back around. She's being evicted from her grandmother's apartment and she needs help from Jeremy. She, she wants money. You wrote a statement lying and I'm broke. I'll help you with what I have. Text me the address, the phone number to the hotel you're at and I will get the cheapest room they have. I'm sorry that I have to be that way, but that's all I have. So, are you coming by? <laughs> oh my God. I'm at work. I can't right now. All I'm saying is, is we have to fix it. You need help. I'm willing to help you. But I need you to fix what you did. Because you've written a fake statement against me and you've changed my life. What are you talking about? Now, Jennifer Burton, she's in this predicament where she's being evicted from her grandmother's apartment because she like took completely took advantage of her grandmother and tried to have her grandmother thrown in a home just so she could take her apartment jennifer's really really crazy i'm trying to tell you she the, the her ex before jeremy like he was a maintenance man at her grandmother's building and she filed a claim against him for rape and at the same time as there's this case against him for rape She's also like spray painting on the side of his car outside of this apartment complex for the world to see. I'm, let me your one more time. She's really crazy and I keep trying, I keep saying that, I keep saying that. I don't think you guys are believing me. She is super mad crazy. Oh, you thought I was cheating on you with a man or something? No. So you. No, I wasn't. I thought you said I was I sleeping was. with a guy or something. He told you. I didn't find that out until after the, until after the statement. Right, but, oh, you wrote the statement before then? I think you look selfish. How am I selfish? Because I'm you're asking me for money and I can't give it to you? Jeremy, I don't want to do this with you right now. I have nowhere to stay tomorrow. Okay, this but... Stop being selfish for five seconds. Look, I thought when I, I saw we were like coming together, I thought it was going to be something beautiful. And we are. We are, but you're... Can you're, I finish this sentence? We are, but you're, thought, you I literally thought, just got done. Beautiful. You literally... It was going to be something mm -hmm. beautiful. I thought you were going to protect me. I thought you were going to love me. And you can't do it. You can't because I have no money because I have no money because you wrote a fake statement and now I had to pay for bond and a lawyer So how are you able to pay for our dinner last night? I'm maxing out my credit cards Well, can you do it one more time? I'm confused. Well, I'm tired. I got like two hours of sleep last night And I'm sorry for that and I want to help you. I have no money you oh my 
wrote a fake statement. You got me arrested. You got me arrested. Why are you? I'm here to help you. I can give you my office. That's the best I can do. If you need money. I need money, your credit card. I need you to use your credit card. <laughs> I'm begging you to use your credit card. Jeremy, I just need you to use the credit card. Right. I, mean, I will do anything that you want me to do. It's not illegal. No, I'm not group sex. I, Please, I'm begging you. What do you want from me? Do you have anal sex with me? I don't know what you want. No, I don't want anything. What I fucking want is my freedom. The, the cops like have her call Jeremy and Jessica Bolden answers the phone. Well, now Jennifer knows that Jeremy's got other women in his life and this drives her even more crazy than she already is in the head. And before long, Jennifer is calling the police on her, claiming that Jessica is stalking her and trying to pull uh, and trying to run her off the road. And I've been I've been stalked. I'm on Paramore. Yeah, I'm being stalked. Okay, thank you, Kenny. I'm sorry. Where are you at right now, ma'am? On um, Gore and Paramore. I'm being stalked by a woman named Jessica Bolden, B-O-L-D-E-N, um, and another woman named Whitney Nichols. It didn't take no time, and Jessica had had enough. She files for dissolution of Metro State Emergency Services, uh, and she actually, in the report, claimed that her signature was used without her knowledge which is kind of crazy. Jeremy starts trying to sell off his ambulances and, and getting out of that. But before he does that, he gets a call from World Wrestling Entertainment, WWE. The police go back and see that now Jeremy has multiple reports filed against him. And they decide that maybe they should start looking into this Metro State Special Services. And now Jeremy and his company are on the real police's radar. All because of Jennifer Burton. She kept filing crazy police reports that half of which were unfounded and untrue. Orlando Police Department, the lines are clear. This is Casey. How can I help you? Yes, um, no, nothing happened. Like, I was, I'm in my apartment and I, I called my ex, which was a mistake. I, I called him because, um, uh, he has all these, uh, cases against him and, you know, I felt bad and I wanted to talk to him and then I was talking to him and, and he told me that he was recording the phone call, but he didn't tell me until the end of the conversation that he was recording me. And he's not supposed to do that and he's gotten in trouble for it, recording people. Okay, did you call earlier? Because I think I remember talking to you. And it all comes to a head in the fall of 2019. Jeremy and his company, Metro State, were doing a funeral escort when a Windermere police officer observed Jeremy driving crazy. I need a unit up here now so he can take over. Uh, it's on my motorcycle. Sorry, to go back to my motorcycle. You have to stand over here. Sorry. I, I can't because unless you're going to put one of your cruisers here and hold this funeral, I, I can't do that. Here, sorry right. to piss me off. Sorry, I'm not trying to piss you off. Get your license. See, okay. Get your license. All right, let's go. He was arrested that day and charged with impersonating a police officer based on what he was wearing. Because, like I said, his uniforms look exactly like a police officer. They all wear batons and then the pepper ball or airsoft guns on their on their duty belts, they wear around their waist. It looks just like law enforcement. They even wear handcuffs in the back. Even though they can't handcuff anybody, they can't you know, do anything with them, they wear all this stuff. And, and something even crazier is, they. Jeremy wears this radio and it like comes over his shoulder and it has like the, the part where a police officer would talk into it. They don't work. Jeremy says they, they don't work. They are all inactive, he wears them just for visual purposes, that's it. Well, they don't work at all, yet he wears one and he makes all of his employees wear them. And he issues a badge. I mean, like a, a law enforcement badge. In fact, it 
is almost identical, as you can see, to the Los Angeles Police Department badge. He chose the Los Angeles Police Department badge and just basically changed the words in it to say Metro State. During that arrest in Windermere, because he was being arrested for impersonating a police officer, they seized all of his uniform. One of the things that they took in that arrest was Jeremy's body camera. And they are horrified at what they see on Jeremy's own video. After that one incident, he would be arrested over and over and over and over again while they watched this footage, gathered all of the crimes that he was doing. All right, Mr. Ladan, you're here for Mr. DeWitt. Yes, Your Honor, I'm here right. on behalf of Mr. DeWitt. Okay, and um, Mike. Um, all of these cases flow from video that was taken from my client as a result of his arrest in Windermere. So in the event that law enforcement obtained these videos and is now going through systematic, systematically to find what else they can potentially charge my client with, what they're finding are those recordings. And Isn't this a recorded phone conversation? Correct. But Anytime he, it's a, it's a helmet cam and a body camera. So anytime it's running, if he makes a phone call, it's going to record it. So I don't know whether, Mr. DeWitt, I wouldn't make any facial expressions or motions or anything. You have an attorney who's capable of arguing whatever they need to argue for you, okay? I'm not. I don't feel like I know enough about what happened, but it's two sworn statements. I understand. And that. then the so judge who signed the capius. Mr. DeWitt, if you can't behave and no, conform, I, I, I then can, we'll Honor. remove I, you, no, okay? Your Honor. I'm sorry, Your Honor. So, um... Persons, the defendant is continuing to be a risk to the community. His business practice continues to be a risk to the community. Uh, the defendant is consistently picking up felony charges while out on bond. The defendant's bond should be revoked for those reasons. But I'm not going to take any action today, okay? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Honor. All right. Because there is so much going on and so many different charges now, the police department assigns a certain uh, detective and a certain unit to investigate Jeremy DeWitt and Metro State. Well, Orlando tasked this assignment to Sergeant Keith Vidler of the Orlando Police Department. Keith Vidler had been in uh, law enforcement for nearly 30 years. He was even a hero at the Pulse nightclub shooting. Sergeants Keith Vidler and Randall Zeller dodged bullets inside while helping to save wounded survivors. It was dark, but there was that strobe light going on. Um, eventually, he started hearing cell phones ringing. We just kept, kept checking to see who was alive and let's get them out. Pretty much, they thought Vidler was the guy who could get it done. So he starts pulling Metro State cars over right and left every time he sees one. Jeremy's brother, Dylan, the other child molester, sex offender, uh, winds up getting arrested for impersonating an officer, as well as several other employees. Get, don't reach for that firearm! Walk away from your bike! Keep your hands up! Keep your hands up! You're being secure because you're openly carrying a firearm. What? You're openly carrying a firearm. You already know that. I do not know that. That is a firearm. That is a firearm right now. He calls his employees contractors. They're employees, but he calls them contractors in an attempt to defraud the state of Florida. If he calls them contractors, then he doesn't have to pay workman's comp. He doesn't even have commercial insurance on his vehicles. Like all Metro State vehicles are listed on Jeremy and Rania's personal insurance with only either him or her or both of them listed as the drivers on those vehicles. Vidler trying to get Jeremy to fall in line. He calls their insurance company and tells them what Jeremy's doing and then his insurance company drops him. Hey there, Sergeant Villa with the Orange County Sheriff's oh, Office. The reason I'm stopping you is the red lights on the front of your vehicle. You cannot have them. I need your driver's license. 
Alright, and the insurance to the vehicle. I, I it's on my phone. I have to I have to download it. As soon as you get it, let me know. I don't have it. I need it. I know I have it. I need it. I need your insurance. Yeah, download. What would you like me to do? I don't have it. You took my phone that had it on my You're phone. supposed to have it in your vehicle. I, I swear, Sergeant. I, I, I have it. We have a valid one. It's at my house. I, I, the last time I called your insurance company, they dropped your insurance. So I need to know what insurance you have on that vehicle, Jeremy. I have it. I need to know. Because last time I called your insurance company, they dropped your insurance on this vehicle. I have it through insurance. Okay, no, because the insurance is the one that I called. They did not know you had that. Oh, I had Infinity on this. Okay, well, I need the I need the copy of the policy. I, I don't, sorry, I don't. Do you have it at the office? No, I don't have it. Then you need to call somebody to get one. You know, he went to his employees and tried to get them to add the Metro State vehicles to the employee's personal insurance plan, just so he didn't have to pay commercial insurance, like, whatever employee is driving said car, he would say, you know, why don't you add that car to your insurance, then you could drive and if you get pulled over, you don't get a ticket kind of thing. He's a slime ball, he really is. There was one instance where Vidler called him out, uh, Vidler pulls him over and Vidler asked him, because Jeremy likes to say this all the time to people to make him, I guess, sound more important. Identify yourself to me. What agency? We're with Metro State. We're a state certified agency. You sit right there, please, sir. Are you a cop? Don't worry about what I am because oh, no. I'm a state agent. So, so Vidler calls him out on it. Hey, Jeremy. Jeremy, show your show me your state certification for your agency. What are you talking about? You now? tell everybody your state certified agency. We have our state license from the state of Florida. What no, you don't. Yes, There's no do. state license. We're LLC in the state of that's, Florida. That's not a state certified agency. That you. Go ahead and sit in your vehicle. State law enforcement. And there's more coming. And there's more coming. Oh, okay. So it wasn't long later. Jeremy's brought in for another interview. They sit down and they show him the footage of him driving dangerously and and telling people to pull over and cussing at people and banging on the hoods of cars. Get the fuck over! What are you doing? What the fuck does it look like I'm doing, dumb fuck? Get the fuck over before you find out. Stop pretending you're a police officer. Listen, Stop motherfucker. It. I know what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do. What you need to do is figure it the fuck out before you start talking shit and cutting us off. I'm do, not cutting anyone. Go ahead and pull your little phone out. I'm not cutting Do your little Google off. search and figure out what we're doing and what I we legally allow. Good. Then back off and give us room. I'm not, you're a, I'm not interfering with you at all. You are by you are running blocking, along. You've been blocking traffic. Yeah, I need you to stay to the side, sir. Dude. That's what the legal I'm law is. The Go back and look it up. I'm 316. Call the on Good. You. Call, call now. Please. 911 right now. I'm not calling 911. Go ahead. Call the 911 right now. I'm not going to call 911. Tell them it's, it's on video emergency. too. Let them know all those. It's on video. We also you have your tag number. So please let me know. Escort you to your Watch this fucking guy. And then they get to a point where you get to see an encounter with this silver Nissan truck. Sit tight. What's wrong, sir? What's wrong? I'm sorry? Are you okay? I'm great, are you law enforcement? I'm asking you a question, are you okay? If you're not law enforcement, I'm not stopping for you. Listen, if you keep going, we'll figure it out real fast. Let's figure it out real fast. Florida Statute 316-1974 says we have sir? the right of way with Are emergency you vehicles. You need to sit tight, sir. No, I don't. You need to sit Are tight. Answer my question. I'm videotaping everything right care. now. I'll get your tag number. If you continue the way you are, I'm we'll have to take care of the situation. I need you to sit tight. Would you let me speak? If you're law enforcement, identify yourself to me. What agency? We're with Metro State. We're a state certified agency. You sit right there, please, sir. Care. Do you have Thank you. Come on, man, get out of the fucking way! 
I gotta deal with this fucking idiot. Move! Sit tight, sir. Please don't continue. Fuck you. Hey, fuck boy. Hey, piece of shit, fuck reach, boy. Reach Mother fuck, fuck boy. The driver of that silver Nissan pickup would go on to uh, call the police and they, uh, the police, the, the silver Nissan truck and Metro State all met up a little bit further on down the road. Hey, I called in. Uh, these guys, this, <laughs> these guys have been coming all the way down Mills. I understand they're doing an escort or whatever, but they're literally going like 90 miles an hour down the road. This, this guy and some of his motors guys. So we went into one lane. This guy jumps out of his car, bangs on our hood, and was like, you can't get in the funeral possession. And I said, hey, I said, I'm not trying to mess up your thing, but I said, the other guy's telling us to get in. He goes, oh, okay, you're he's cussing at us, you know, you know, saying fuck boy and stuff. I got my four-year-old kid in the car here with me and my wife. Um, and then he starts following behind us like he's going to pull us over. Well, I'm not pulling over for him. Yeah, 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 we were on him. I found them about some of the stuff years ago we had. Yeah. There's two brothers, and I don't know if he's one of them, that were kind of running the company that we arrested. Yeah, because they used they, to they live were, on Nebraska. They were uh, impersonating uh, your bike unit years ago, and also they were going down the drive during the classic and writing tickets. He stole someone's ticket book or writing tickets uh, during the classic. They suspect Jeremy and Dylan of driving up and down the roads in Orlando and pulling people over and writing them some kind of like fake ticket or something. How do you know how to do this stuff? Uh, dismantling bombs over the I'm sorry, <laughs> what did you say? Dismantling bombs? You never told me that. You said you were like special ops, but you never said you were like dismantling bombs. Baby, can I say something? I do want you to like stop pulling people over though. What are you talking about? You just pulled somebody over like a week ago. That was a week ago. Oh my god. I don't know. I just don't want you to like draw attention to yourself. It's our job. It's your job? I get phone calls all the time. People, People call you? Fuck yeah. What your they say? Your officer did this, your officer did that, your officer did this, your officer did that. Your officers don't pull people over, do they? Of course. Oh my god. I thought it was only you. They shouldn't be doing that. So they're in the police station they've sit jeremy down for this interview and they pull up the footage that they recovered from his body camera and they start showing it to him he has a very unique reaction to seeing his own footage what are you doing what the fuck's it look like i'm doing Don't that's not even my voice get the fuck over before you find out stop turning your police officer Listen, Stop. I know what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do. What you need to do is figure it out. That's not me. That's not even my voice. Okay. Go. Corporal, I, we're done. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Does anyone want to talk to me? Okay. Well, you know what, guys? I'm here today to tell you that that is him. This is Jeremy's voice. Uh, they're arresting me for impersonating. For impersonating. How are you impersonating? Because they're saying that they, there's a video of, of somebody's helmet camera and it shows them running sirens and telling somebody to pull off the road. And they're saying it's me. No, they're saying it's me, but it's not fucking me. It's fucking, I don't know who it is. To be honest with you, I can't tell who it is. And this is the person Jeremy says is not him. What are you doing? What the fuck does it look like I'm doing, dumb fuck? Get the fuck over before you find out. Stop pretending you're a police officer. Listen, Stop motherfucker. It. I know what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do. What you need to do is figure it the fuck out before you start talking shit. As you can clearly tell, it's Jeremy. He's, and he was stupid for saying that because obviously the police aren't dumb either. They know his voice. The fact that I'm not the one in the videos, I know it's not me because I know exactly where I was. Jeremy DeWitt talked exclusively with West 2 News after he was released from jail Saturday. DeWitt told us Saturday he was not working August 30th and wonders why officers with various agencies seem to be targeting him. The fact that we were running our business for 10 years with no problems and then all of a sudden now it keeps happening over and over, it's a little confusing and, and very disturbing. So as all this is going on, about the same time, a YouTube channel that goes by the name Real World police some of you may have heard of them if you haven't i definitely recommend you go check them out 
But Real World Police files a Freedom of Information Act request with the Orlando Police Department looking for uh, body camera footage to put up on his channel. And they send him a smorgasbord of videos and documents and pictures, everything with the title Serial Police Impersonator. So as Real World Police is posting all these videos and people are starting to watch, uh, Real World has a good following already and people are watching it, Jeremy starts getting mad that people are looking at him negatively, even though it's his actions that are making people angry or upset with him or why people don't like him. It's his actions that are doing this. So Jeremy decides to call up Dr. Phil out in Los Angeles. He wants to get on the Dr. Phil show to help him try and prove that he's not impersonating a police officer. Yeah. All right, the man in uniform is Jeremy, and he's outside the studio right now. He says he's been falsely portrayed in the media and victimized in his community and wants to clear his name. It completely backfired on Jeremy. Dr. Field tells him that he looks exactly like a cop. Jeremy voluntarily took a polygraph test, and he failed it miserably. Like, the worst anyone has ever failed a polygraph test ever before, Jeremy failed it. Okay. Well, let's look at the results. Question number one, have you knowingly misused your given funeral escort rights to appear as someone empowered by law enforcement? And your answer was? No. Two, have you falsely presented yourself to a citizen as someone empowered by law enforcement? And your answer was? No. Three, during the course of your duties, have you knowingly used authority exclusively given to law enforcement officers? And your answer was? No. What was the result? Um, it is my opinion that Mr. DeWitt was being deceptive to the target questions. Okay, and what, numerically, what would he have to have scored to have come out deceptive? This methodology calls for a minus three or less in order to be in the deceptive range. Mr. DeWitt scored at a uh, negative 37. So this was not a close call. This was not a close call. All in all, it turned out to be a horrible decision on Jeremy's part to go on the Dr. Phil show. And then it was exacerbated by the fact that when Jeremy got home, he was arrested again for failing to register because as a sex offender, if he leaves town for more than two days at a time. He has to go into the sheriff's department to let them know where he's going to be, how long he's going to be there, etc., so they can inform the, where he's going, that there's going to be a, uh, a child molester in the area, uh, you know, for how many days. Well, Jeremy gets back and they arrest him for failing to register because he was in Los Angeles for the Dr. Field show for five days and he didn't tell him. Now, it's funny to me, Jeremy tells everyone he's ran his business clean and by the book for 10 years without any problems. When the guys are at, or girls at Metro are like fixing to go in front of a police station or there's police behind them or something like that, they act differently and Jeremy tells them to act differently. Make sure you don't use your lights or sirens or this or that or the other until we get past these police and then go back to it. So he knows he's doing wrong. He just by saying he doesn't know. He thinks people actually believe You guys need to make sure you guys move up the road carefully. He's on the phone with Orange County right now, letting him know you guys are coming. So you better make sure you follow your P's and Q's. Hey, listen, Dylan, listen to me. Listen to me now. Stop telling people to get out. Just run it as safe as you can. You're going into the hardest section of I drive coming up. Just run it do the best you can. Don't worry about that shit. Stay in front of the escort. Jeremy has gone on record saying that he knows that he can't use the sirens. He knows that he can't tell people to pull over. Get the fuck over! He knows that he can't take up two lanes of traffic. I need units now. He knows that he can't drive on the wrong side of the road or cross the double yellow line.
got angry that Real World Police started posting these videos that clearly show him doing all this bad stuff. He wants you to believe that he's doing things the right way, even though he's not. So Jeremy creates his own YouTube channel and pretty much he just comes and lies and lies and lies and lies and lies. Even though there is clear video evidence to prove that Jeremy's lying, he still does it and it, it's wild. How many accidents have you have during your funeral you know, have you caused? Have we caused? Mm -hmm. Zero. <laughs> Jeremy himself caused a wreck and he was driving up the wrong side of the road as he does on a regular basis, crossed over the double yellow lines and was driving up the wrong side of traffic and he hit a car. Not only is he a uh, serial police impersonator, he's a serial adulterist or cheater and he's a serial liar. All in all, him making the YouTube channel and, and posting videos just made him look more like a douchebag. It just made him look like a bigger douchebag than he already looked like. There was an instance uh, where his wife, Rania, got injured. And they said she slipped and fell. Just recently, we learned that that's not the case, that apparently Jeremy threw something at her and hit her and then threatened her if, you know, if she called the cops. It's all out there, black and white. For three years I've been faithful. For three years! I've been faithful for three years! Call the police! And I'll tell them how you threw it at me too! I'll tell them how you threw it at me too! And they'll take our daughter away! They'll take our daughter away from us! I'll tell them how you did it too! If you call the police, Ryan, if you call the police... If you call the police...
Jeremy's life's falling apart. You know, his wife is wanting to leave him. His girlfriends are filing police reports on him right and left. His employees are leaving him at a, as quick as possible. They don't want to, they don't want to get in trouble. They don't they're getting arrested. He's trying to make them pay insurance. He's trying to, uh, you know, put all the blame on them, and they don't want nothing to do with it, so they're leaving him right and left. But Jeremy just can't get it through his head that the reason all this is happening is because of his actions, being a lunatic out on the roads and putting people's lives in danger, and Jennifer Burton constantly calling the police on him. That is why it's happening to him, and he, he just... He, he, does, he didn't seem to grasp that. But even though Jennifer is so manipulative and so psychotic, I guess you would say, she is all that Jeremy has at this point. He's lost everyone else that was close to him or helped him or supported him. She's it. And she is so crazy. Like, she's dying to become Mrs. Jeremy DeWitt for some reason. I don't know why. No one can figure it out. She's, you know, who knows? They're at the Metro State office one day. Somebody vandalized their cars. Their tires were slashed and the cars were spray painted. And it, it appears that it says stolen valor on the side of one of his cars. So that instance in Tampa that we talked about earlier where I said it follows him, where he claimed to have uh, been in the military. Like I told you, that follows him even still to this day. But. Jennifer and Jeremy wind up getting into an argument with each other where she says she's leaving and she tries to take one of his Metro cars and he says no. So he goes to close the door and Jennifer's foot is called in. Well, this is a perfect opportunity for her. So doing as she has done a hundred times at this point throughout their relationship, she picks up the phone and calls 911 as she, again, she did it for everything. She is on the phone with the 911 operator making it seem like Jeremy is you know trying to kill her the police come so now they were able to arrest him for domestic violence which dating violence is what they call it but they also revoked all of his other bonds well all 15 of them or whatever the number was they revoked them all and Jeremy was stuck in jail Jennifer Burton had successfully met organized and taken down the serial police impersonator, Jeremy DeWitt. So Jeremy's locked up in jail. He doesn't have anyone else to really go to. So he strings Jennifer along. So as he's in the Orange County jail, so he lets Jennifer I'm not sure if he let her think that he's that she was in charge or if she actually was in charge. Either way, in in one month of Jennifer in charge, Metro State had no more business coming in. Metro State as a company is completely broke. They're on the verge of eviction, which would be bad because she has nowhere to go. She's living in the Metro office. So if they get evicted, what's she gonna do? All of Jeremy's vehicles have disappeared. She claims that people stole them, but there's no police reports out there to back that up. I've seen on videos on YouTube where people think that Jeremy had his family hide the cars from her so she couldn't try to sell them off or, or do whatever while he was in jail. But they're all gone. No one knows where they are. There's even a, a, several reports out there that say that they were repossessed. No one knows. Jennifer has access to all of Jeremy's money, all of his stuff. Like I said, she's sleeping at the Metro State office. Jeremy has given her control over his YouTube channel. For a while, we didn't hear anything. For a while, there was nothing. But then all of a sudden, one day, Jennifer posts a video. She claims that she's pregnant with Jeremy's baby. 
basically in that same video accuses Jeremy's family of destroying Metro State, the business and everything about it, even though they are removed. Jennifer's the one running Metro State and she's ran it in, a, in, in only a month's time. She's completely destroyed it. Jeremy can't do anything about it. He's locked up in jail. He, he doesn't even know she's posting these videos probably unless you know, his mom tells him if he calls her. There's nothing he can do and she's just bad mouthing Jeremy's family on YouTube like it is normal, like it's okay. That gets us up to pretty close to present day. So they go in front of the judge there and he tells them, look, I've got to do something with my business that I can't do from here. So in one week's time, the same judge denied him bond, but then chose to let him out of jail. He has to wear an ankle monitor. He has to, the, he had, his curfew is from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. So he can't be out at night at all. And the only time he can really leave during the daytime is to do something if he's trying to dissolve Metro State. It is by court order that Metro State can no longer exist and Jeremy is to dissolve, he's to sell off the cars, get rid of the property, everything. He's gotta get rid of it all by court order now. So they let him out of jail to attend to all that. But the last stipulation for him to get out of jail is that he can no longer have contact with Jennifer Burke. Jennifer posted a video to the Metro State channel. Jennifer is trying to burn him now. That only leads you to one conclusion. Jeremy kicked her out of the Metro State building and, and she's out on her own. Uh, she obviously still has access to his YouTube channel. And now Jennifer is pissed. Either way, very soon more information should come out. Obviously, he should be going to trial before long. I think uh, end of July, August is going to be when his next trial date is. I couldn't help but to tell the story because of how crazy it was. And, and you know, just when you think Jeremy DeWitt is the craziest SOB you've ever seen in your life, here comes Jennifer Burton to say, hold my beer. They're just crazy in different ways. Jeremy is like self-absorbed, like it's all about him. And Jennifer is just like psychotic crazy. Either way, uh, maybe we'll come back and update this once we, once trials have happened and all that stuff. We'll see what you guys think about it when that time comes. That's going to do it for this video today on the serial police impersonator, Jeremy Charles DeWitt. I want to thank you all so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you're new here, go down and hit that subscribe button. Then hit that notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a video. Thank you all so much for watching. I will see you again tomorrow. Please stay safe and stay healthy. Much love to you.